everybody, I hope you're really well. Um, today I'd like to share with you one of my favourite stories and it's a story that I've only just come across as a grown up but it's one of those stories that you know when you find it and you just want to tell everybody about it. So this is my story. But I didn't have it as a book and I thought how can I share this story with all of my friends if I haven't got the book? But I found it on YouTube and maybe there's books that you're missing that your grown up at home might be able to find for you on YouTube or if you're a member of Grantham Library then I think they've got some digital books that you can look at. So there's always ways to share your favourite things and just to, to remember them. So I'm sharing mine with you today and it's called You Are Special. The Wemmicks were small wooden people. These little wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. Eli's workshop sat on a hill overlooking the Wemmick village. Every one of the Wemmicks were different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall and others were short. Some wore hats, others wore coats, but all were made by the same carver and all lived in the same village. All day long, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of dull grey dot stickers. Up and down the streets all over the city, people could be seen sticking these stickers onto each other. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got shiny gold stars. But if the wood was rough, or the paint was chipped. The Wemmicks gave dull grey dots. The talented ones got stars too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing very pretty songs. Everyone gave them shiny gold stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. There were many other Wemmicks though that could do very little. They got dull grey dots. One was little Wemmick called Punchinello. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather round and give him dull grey dots. Sometimes when he fell, it would scar his wood so the people would give him more grey dots. He would try to explain why he fell and in doing so he would say something really silly. Then the Wemmicks would give him some more dots. After a while, Punchinello had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb such as forget his hat or step in the water and then people would give him more grey dots. In fact, he had so many grey dots that some people would come up and just give him one without any reason. He deserves lots of dots, they would say. The wooden people would agree with another. He's not a good wooden person, they would say. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had lots of grey dots. At least he felt better around them. One day he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever met. She had no grey dots and did not have any shiny golden stars either. She was a wooden Wemmick and her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. They just didn't stick. Some admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Some would look down on her for having no stars, so they'd give her a dot. But it wouldn't stick either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anybody else's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia replied. 
Every day I go and see Eli. Who's Eli? He's the wood carver. I sit in his workshop and spend time with him. He asked Lucy, why do you do that? And she told him, why don't you find out for yourself? Go up the hill and visit him. He's there. And with that, the sweet little Wemmick named Lucia turned and skipped away. But he won't want to see me, Punchinello cried out to her. Lucia didn't hear him. So Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around giving each other gold stars and grey dots. It's just not right, he muttered to himself. Then he resolved to go and see Eli. Punchinello walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and he stepped into the woodcarver's shop. His little wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tippy toes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard and thought to himself, I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. Just then he heard his name. Punchinello, said this voice so deep and strong. Punchinello, oh how good it is of you to come. Let me have a look at you. Punchinello slowly turned around and looked at the large beaded craftsman and said, Sir, you know my name? Of course I do. I made you, Eli said. All of a sudden, Eli stooped down and picked little Punchinello up and set him on the workbench. Hmm, the maker spoke thoughtfully as he inspected the grey circles all over him. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. Punchinello explained, Oh Eli, I didn't mean to, really I didn't. I tried really hard not to. The maker said, oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, my child. I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. Punchinello asked, really, you don't? Then Eli said, no, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give you stars or dots? They are Wemmicks just like you. What they think doesn't matter at all. All that matters is what I think. And I think you're pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me special? How can I be special? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My paint is peeling. I make silly mistakes all the time. And I'm not a beautiful Wemmick like some of the others. How could I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello and put his hands on those little wooden shoulders. Because, Punchinello... You are mine. That is why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him this way before or say anything so nice, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Punchinello, every day I've been waiting and hoping you would come to see me, Eli explained. Punchinello looked up at him and said, I came because I met a sweet Wemmick girl who had no marks. Eli said, I know, Lucia told me about you. So Punchinello asked, why don't the stickers stay on Lucia? Eli said, because she's decided that what I think is more important than what anyone else thinks. The stickers only stick if you let them. Punchinello looked puzzled. What? Eli said, yes. The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust, my love, the less you will care about those stickers. But Punchinello said, I'm not sure I really understand. What are you saying? The maker said, you will, but it will take some time. You've got a lot of marks. So for now, just come to see me every day and let me remind you how much I care about you. Now remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you are special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop. 
but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And each time he remembered what Eli told him, and each time he went to visit and talk with Eli, one of Punchinello's dots would fall off. They kept falling off and soon they were all gone. So like Punchinello, we must remember one thing. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. I hope you liked that story. Isn't it lovely to think that somebody made us and somebody cares so much about us that it doesn't really matter what other people think. Remember, stay safe, keep reading, and you are special. See you soon.